are all having a blessed day. It is cloudy and drizzly here on the mountain today. We are here with our next project. You can still see the last one up behind me on the design wall. I still haven't sewn the blocks together. I'm working on it. But we are here with our very next project and this one is going to be a fun kaleidoscope quilt and it's going to be ridiculously easy. And if you can sew a four patch together, you can do this quilt. So it's very simple and it's not scary at all. There is some minor technical where you have to make sure you line things up and you have to have enough fabric to get at least four repeats. It could be a very small quilt or it could be, you know, a larger quilt depending on how many squares you want to make. So I am, I am being attacked by Dinky down here and as soon as he's done ripping my hand off, <laughs> and the bloody stump stops bleeding, we'll head over to the cutting table and we'll get set up. Okay, this is going to be an intro. I am using the Pioneer Woman's fabric line. Yes, I got it from Walmart. It's called Sweet Romance, and it's a three yard cut that you'll see up here. This is all 100% cotton, and it almost feels like a very short pile flannel. It's absolutely luscious, and I think it'll make a spectacular quilt. As you can see, there are a lot of duplications here. That's fine. So what we're going to be doing is we need at least four repeats. This is three yards, so every 27, this is 108 inches long. So if you divide that by four, you get 27 inches. So if we can cut this into 27 inch or shorter repeats, we will have enough fabric for however many squares we make. I don't have, I haven't thought that far ahead yet. All right, let's go over some of the critical things with this fabric or with any kaleidoscope quilt. You must be able to find the repeat and you must need one repeat for every piece that your block requires. So if you're doing a hexagon, you will need six pieces. Therefore, you will need six repeats. If you are doing an octagon, you will need eight repeats. If you're doing four pieces, which is what we are doing, you will need at least four repeats. And as you can see, there are a lot of fabric, a lot of flowers here that repeat. This one actually repeats four times within the repeat, but the real repeat is here. You can see that I cut the fabric right at the white line in the four. So you travel along your salvage until you find that again, okay? That's your repeat. The fabric is printed one repeat at a time. So regardless of how many repeats of the flowers you have here, there could be differences. And those differences may actually land wherever the repeat starts. I don't know where this repeat started. You'd have to see it on the loom for that. So we are going to make four cuts and we're going to be right here at this line. So I am going to move this fabric about a wee bit just to get it lined up. I would like this to be lined up on one of these solid lines on the bottom and on the top, and that will ease cutting. I've already ironed this, and I have some pins here out of my way just holding it together. And once we get the repeats, then I will show you how to stack and pin them and get them ready for cutting. I have this edge lined up with some dots, three quarter inch mark dot, and I've traveled down here to the four, and the ruler is lined up with the number two line here and up there. So that will be my first cut. So I'm gonna verify that this is right where I want it. And I'm putting my dumbbell there, and we're going to make our first cut. Okay, it went all the way through. It's always good to start with a new blade. So let me turn the camera off and then I'll show you how to get set up for the next one. Okay, I have our first piece cut and now we're doing basically the same thing. So you can see that that's the four and we're gonna go all the way down here to this four and we're going to make our next cut. We're gonna do this a total of, we're gonna make a total of three cuts to give us four pieces of fabric and we may have to trim up the last piece a wee bit. Okay, so I am gonna to get to that. I'm gonna lay my, I'm gonna lay my ruler on here. Oh, you'll be happy to know you don't have to look at that old stained 20 year old ironing mat anymore. I got one of the wool ones. I'm hoping it doesn't smell like a dead animal or something. Home James, 
a good some people have complained that that's that's the case so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make sure that this the edge of this four lines up on either a halfway dot or on a full line and then i'm going to make my cut straight across if i lay this right on the line see it's a strange repeat this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four and a half inches is the repeat. We'll leave it to Walmart. Okay, that cut. All right, so that is what we are doing. I'm going to make get two more repeats together, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how I pin it. Okay, this is the last cut that I'm making, and I wanted to show you how much was actually left. So I don't know if this was exactly 108 inches or not, but if it's a three yard cut, it should be 108 inches long. So this will end up having about, six, about eight or nine inches left after I make this final cut. So it might be enough for the binding, who knows? Depends on how big we make this quilt. We're gonna start by lining up the edges and you can see up here the cut is not exact this has less of the yellow flower than this has this one has a lot more of the flower so does this one so what you're going to do is you're going to want to line that up so that the flowers are equal and you're going to look for a piece in the design that is unique enough that you can actually pick it out okay i didn't put pins on this okay hoping you can see i can't see the screen of the camera because it's behind the okay it's behind the the holdy thing technical term okay so i can see this triangle here this little light green triangle so that's what i'm going to find my repeat as so i'm going to go here and i'm going to find it there it is okay stick it in just don't draw blood okay and then stick it in in the same exact spot there and we're going to take these pins out because they'll be in our way okay and you can also line up the back although there's no pattern here it's right in line with this little green leaf so you can see if that's where it is here yeah basically okay so that's been lined up and we're going to put a pin there and then we're going to bring in the next piece and again i'm going to take out these pins because i don't need them at the moment and we are going to find the same spot here like that yep and that's in line with the leaf and we are going to pin it in the last piece and take this other pin out okay you can see that i've got that pinned right there and then i put the other pin in so now we take that out and we pin now we're going to do the last corner take these pins out and here is that spot again that green triangle and you can't tell where the leaf is i think i can just see a thread of it here so that's in line we're going to stick it right through keep that straight and then put the pin in and that's a little bit off okay that's pretty close pretty near okay and i'm going to leave that i'm not going to pin it down yet because all of the rest of the fabric is not laid out straight yet but i'm going to grab the other edge and i'm just going to kind of shake shake the fabric a wee bit get wrinkles out you can see up here at the top i'm shaking it and i'm trying to get it to lay straight and i'm looking at this section here and this section and i'm seeing the patterns are lighting up okay so i'm putting the pin in it goes the same all the way down so we're going to find another spot like the white triangle in this flower here right at the very tip can you see that oh i'm sorry okay so we have this triangle right here i'm going to put the pin right at the tip of that triangle and then i'm going to match it up on this piece and on this piece and then on this piece okay and what i'm doing is i'm wiggling the pin because i don't want it to be cockeyed like this i want it to be straight perpendicular to the fabric that way that way the pattern will line up and then i'm going to take a bite there okay now we're going to mosey on down to another section and rinse and repeat and there goes dinky clawing up the couch it's a good thing i don't have fancy furniture all right so i'm going to use the tip of this 
pale little leaf here. Stab that in, go down to the next layer, stab that in, next layer, and the final layer. Okay, and we're gonna kind of give it a little bit of a shake. Make sure it's lined up nice and straight and take a bite. And now we're going to do the next. We can do this red piece right here. I'm gonna do the tip of it, okay? The next layer and the next layer and the last layer. And I'm just giving it a bit of a wiggle so that it becomes perpendicular to the fabric. And then I pull it out a wee bit and I take a small bite and a half of an inch. Taking another pin, and this will be our last pin going down. What I'm going to aim for is this little red line right here. Okay, find the next repeat there. This is a strange repeat length. It's, I think it's 24 and a half inches. And now the last perpendicular. So we've done that. We're going to pick up the fabric. I'm holding it by the pins and I'm just shaking it out. And now I've laid it back down. So there should be no wrinkles. Everything should be naturally where it wants to be. And now we're going to start looking for repeats along the top edge. And this is where these flat pins really come in handy because you're going to need to lay rulers over this when we're done pinning. And you're going to need, you're going to, need to be cutting your repeats, cutting your strips. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go for the flower petal right where it meets the yellow petal. And you just wanna smooth this out and you wanna make sure that there's no rolls or ripples in the fabric as you're doing this. I made a kaleidoscope quilt out of a six yard length of Free Spirit uh, Cafe Facet Lotus Blossom, I think it was. And I had six layers stacked and the far corner worked great. But by the time I got over to the end, this fabric was all rippled up like this. So the entire reprint had been skewed. So this piece lined up with the exact pattern below. That's the way the entire, let me see if you can see that. So I, this doesn't work for this right here, but when I pinned this point here, when I went to look for it on the next piece, it was down here. So I ended up with fabric that rippled like this. So the entire quilt was unusable. I ended up only being able to make a baby quilt out of it because I couldn't get enough pieces to make a, you know, a larger one. So you just want to... Make sure that things stay smoothed out and that there's no there's no ripples. So now I'm going to go down this away and I'm going to pick the tip of this purple where it meets the two colored leaves. There. There. And I'm just going to pick it up and let it lie the way it wants. And what you can do is you can do a midpoint repeat here by folding back, or you can do repeats down here at the salvage. And I think that that is what I will do. So let's see, I can turn that so you can see it. Grabbing a pin, and we can look at the very tip of this green leaf right here. And where to go? There it is, there. I hope you can see. And there, and right there. And I'm just going to allow gravity to help me out, making sure that everything stays lined up. So I have one here. And now I'm going to go back over here to the fold line and make some more repeat pins. So here's that same spot. So it is a red bud and the tip of the green leaf. Red bud, tip of the green leaf. Okay, and the last one. So now we lay that out. Again, I'm gonna lift it up. Let gravity help me out. And I'll do two more pins, or two or three, I'm not sure yet. You can also look at the back here. That's the same. Well, that's off a wee bit. Oh, no, that's good. That's good, okay. All right, so again, we're just shaking it about so that it hangs straight. And then I'm putting a pin there. And now we'll do the last corner here and we can go right there so I'm putting the right where the purple and the yellow meet okay 
Ouch, I hate pins. Now I will put some pins down here. I don't feel any ripples between these pins. So I'm comfortable that it's laying straight. You can spot check if you want. To spot check, you'd have to put the pinned end on the other side. And you would have to, you'd have to fold things back. So if we wanted to check the repeat status, we would start, here's the top one. So let's do the tip of this, let's do the tip of this leaf here. Flip it over, find the next one. Find the nap. Yeah, it's on it. That's right where it needs to be. And yes. So we're just going to stick that pin in there and hope it stays put while I fix things. Okay, I don't want to pin it with all this rippling. Stay put. There. I have some fluffage here, but that will get worked out. All right, there's that. Now let me pick this up and shake it. There's no ripples here. Everything's laying flat. I have some ripples over here because I haven't pinned it yet. So we will work on that next. So the next spot will be down here along the salvage. And we'll find our next target. I'd like to get it closer to the edge. I'm going to do the tip of this leaf. Find the next layer. Tip of the leaf. Go down the next two. Tip of the leaf and tip of the leaf and i'm going to check the back it's kind of just off that leaf that's kind of off yeah that's the wrong leaf i think no it's not okay. i want to do that over again after getting everything to lie down flat again you just take your time just take your time okay tip of the leaf tip of the purple find the next layer okay tip of the leaf way off tip of the purple tip of the leaf we'll see how bad this is tip of the purple so we're gonna hang that and see if we can't get it to line up without making ripples okay i have a ripple here and i'm not comfortable with that i will pick a different location and see what happens i'm looking at this salvage and i can see that it is quite curvy it's not a straight line, it kind of goes wee. You can make a decision that you're not gonna use anything from like here down because it might be stretched, it might be distorted. So if that's the case, then let's just, let's just pick a spot that's up a wee bit higher. And that's right on the vein of that leaf. That's way off. That there is way off. This is the most time consuming part of the entire process. That's off by about a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna try and fix it. That should be there. And I may have to take things apart and repin, and that's fine. That's pretty close. That is pretty close. Yes. Yep. Okay, there we go. A little wrinkly here, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. There's a wee bit of fullness in here, but again, this was kinda a wee bit cockeyed but it's not terrible. I mean, it doesn't have to be down to the actual dot of ink, but you don't want you don't want things like this happening in the middle of the fabric because that will cause problems. But it's on the edge and we don't have to use that. I can cut this down at 21 inches all the way and there's no rippling above that. So that's just the distortion of the salvage. Okay, so I'm not feeling any ripples anywhere else. But my blood sugar has plummeted and I need to go eat something before I pass out. Okay, I have had my dinner and I am just feeling this and everything feels great except from this point here. This this point was a little stretched out. We don't have to use the squares from that section. This is going to be a long video. I really want to take my time doing this and show you that it can be done and not, not to worry, don't panic. And you can see that it's not even. That's why you don't want to say, well, here's a repeat, so I only have to cut this far because there might be subtle differences between these, re you know, between these two flowers that would not become apparent until you hit a repeat. So that's why using the salvage as your repeat marker is the best choice. And as you can see, like I said, this fabric had a bit of a bow in this salvage edge here. So I had to 
there's some ripples down there, but I'm going to try and work, ouch, I'm going to try and work with it. Okay, for this next step, I am going to line up this edge with one inch mark, and I'm going to put another pin up here at the top, right next to this one, because I need to remove that one. I am going to cut off one inch because down here is not even taking my weight, putting it there. And you want a nice sharp rotary blade for this. Don't, don't pull the ruler away. Okay, so we've cut off an inch and we can save these strips to use in scrap strip quilts or woven blocks or whatever. So don't, don't toss that. We are going to be cutting off four inch strips. See when you look at this repeat here, it doesn't line up there. So you can't go by this. You have to go by the salvage. Always make sure there's no pins in your path. Nope, don't move your ruler. First strip done. Make sure there's no pins in my path. Here is our second strip. Make sure there's no pins, no pins. Okay, that's the fourth one. Last one. And this here is X3. Can't do much with it. It's not big enough. And we will save this for possibly the binding. If not the binding for this quilt, maybe the binding for another quilt because it is certainly pretty. And this is quite nice fabric. It has a nice body to it. It's about the weight of a flannel and it kind of feels almost like a flannel. Now we take our strips and we go this away. You can see, and this needs to be trimmed up. It's not even, so I am actually going to trim that up. It's gonna go right along the edge here and knock off all of these folds. And now the fabric is nice and straight there. So we've got one, two, three, four, and I got a pin there, of course. So I'll move the pin, and I'm going to use a smaller ruler. There is our first block. I'll do one more, and then we'll get into the fun. Now there are two blocks in each of these piles because we have the back and we have the front. Yes, that works good because that's where the ripple was in the middle down below here. I hope you can see. Okay, and that is scrap. So now let's have some fun. We have one, two, So, here comes the magic. There you go. Isn't that cool? Check that out. And if you don't like this one, try this one. And you can keep flipping them around until you get something that you like. But I, I think I like that one. And when you're happy with it, you can just pin it together. And it's not, it, it's not, um, this is not, you know, carved in stone, okay? If you sit down at your sewing machine and say, hmm, wait a minute, maybe let's try this one. And you happen to like that better, then that's the one you go with, okay? That gives you a little twirly, a twirly bob. That's a technical term. So you can have lots and lots and lots of fun with this. But you want, the one thing you want to do is if you are really enamored of a particular layout, put a pin in that corner so you know that's the corner you want. But if you're open to suggestions, then just pin them together. And let's see what this other one gives us. This looks like it'll be a wreath. A wreath this way, I think. There you go, that's kind of cool. So that's another one. And pin. These are almost the same, front and back. That's pretty cool. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I like that. I like that one. Let's see what the purple looks like. I like that one too. There's another wreath. 
And it doesn't have to be a wreath. You could go for the green pattern, the background, to be your design. Let's see what these yellow ones. This one will give me a flower in the middle, I bet. There we go. Oh, I like that. That's pretty. Let's try the yellow. So that is how you go about aligning your fabric, slicing and dicing your fabric. And this is what some of the blocks will look like. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the camera off and I'm going to go about slicing and dicing all of these squares. And I think what I'll do is being that this was a long process, I will stop the video here and it'll be a two-parter and we'll come back to sewing these together. Good night, Elizabeth. Good night, cowboy.